Like this light needs to be somewhere else, right? Like that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. uh, you're live on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the studio. We're going to be live streaming on three platforms today, and we're over here live now on TikTok and Instagram. Welcome, everybody, on three different platforms. Each of the platforms has a little bit different content, but uh, sometimes it's the same, like today. <laughs> Welcome. This is David with DavidAustinGallery.com. Welcome back to my very, very dreary, rainy day outside in Duluth, Minnesota today. It's, it's a little bit rainy. Yeah. A lot of rain coming down, and we found a leak in our roof today. We found it. We're really actually pretty sad about that. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, so that's of course my beautiful, lovely tech guru, Kristen Austin. Hi. Good morning, everybody. We're married. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're going to do a little different approach today. I've run out of surfaces, <laughs> and I didn't go get any. I usually go get them before before we do these, so we can do a live. Uh, painting session and, and sometimes it's easier to show a new painting a new start to it than it is for example to show the very laborious uh, method of finishing the finishing process takes time I sit in my hand my mom's my mom's old rocking chair there and I do a lot of sitting and Kristen walks in and jokes <laughs> that oh I came in here says sitting again aren't you so most of my time is actually spent like that to finish the work. When you guys watch a lot of these demonstrations, it looks like, oh, it's big, and it's done, and it's not really a lot of time after that to finish it. And sometimes you get stuck on a painting, you know, like the one that's up here. Um, can we see this one or not? What do you do with that light? I'm moving. Okay. My studio assistant. So anyway, this is a four by four foot piece, and I've been staring at it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the only way you can get moving forward, and we are going to paint, by the way. Don't don't leave yet. We're going to do some crazy, crazy painting stuff today. Um, the only way I could move forward was really butt in my seat. So literally, I sat in the rocking chair over there, and I and I worked and I worked, and I, and I made some advancements on this and some other pieces in here. But pushing past that that block, that roadblock that you can develop, is how you're going to reach that next that next stage of your development as, as an artist. Or in any creative pursuit, really, you know that next leap, uh, whether it's science or writing or, or any of that stuff, requires you to be doing the work. And it was hard. It was really hard. And I moved past. I'm really excited by this piece. I'm not sure if it's done at this point, but it's definitely uh, a, a lot more layers, some some different techniques added in. And so it's very exciting for me to make that. And there's a few others along the wall that are that way. There's a collage that we did last week. With here, I'll bring that down right here. Oh, that's better than the light right there. And so this is one of the collages that we did with um, with uh, my kiddo the other day because we didn't have anybody to keep an eye on. We have a kid sitter today. Yay! There you go. <laughs> some response, some feedback. So this is a two by two, and it has a lot of different textural stuff. Had a lot of fun with the kid, and that'll help break me out of my uh, my stuckness too. So that, that's kind of what I wanted to address. Uh, some of, some really good uh, followers of, of ours and friends have said, I'm stuck. I don't have any material left. You know, I, I don't have. So if you don't have what you normally have, do something else. So I pulled out some random scrap paintings and drawings and things, that, and I just laid them out here on my work table. And, and we're going to play with this. And, and just I'm going to work with you to kind of get you past it. If you don't have it, you know, if you have white paint, put some white paint on it. If you have a box full of junk with miscellaneous stuff in it, pens and pencils, work with that. The point is to start working. You know, even if it's the auto, what do they call it? Automatic drawing? Automatic thing? drawing. Yeah. We actually sat over here at Phantom's Edge uh, to be about starting to paint soon, but they traditionally just draw. Ah, well, I totally would encourage that as, as I'm painting right here. I'm not even looking. Not even looking. Oh my God, awesome. Not even looking. <laughs> So this is your head to and so this is a good way to start. I've got all these surfaces on here, and I'm going to explore. I'm going to let myself explore today and see what we can develop on this. So this is just a white gesso, I'm starting this way, and then I'm going to build up the surfaces. There will be some contrary. See, I already like that better. <laughs> I like the stress of those who are just joining us and have never been here before. This is not usually how to paint. No, but I needed I needed something. You know, I was kind of stalked a little. <laughs> Right? So 
That's why we're doing this weird stuff today. Just pouring some black paint out, some flat black paint. Welcome everybody over on TikTok and on Instagram this morning. You know, it's really interesting because I don't usually work in this way, although with my collages I kind of do, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to see off the walls getting out of her own phone now. Good. <laughs> so, you know, it, just because you made a piece doesn't mean that it's sac sacrosanct, you know, that you can't touch it again ever. So these are repaints. And the funny thing is, I was looking, we had a weird start to the morning, and I think the rain was part of it. I'm exhausted because I built our garden pond yesterday, right? Yeah. So the wee hours of the night. <laughs> Because I wanted it done, I knew there was some nasty weather coming in. Uh, again, more rain, flooding for our area. Well, actually, we're high and dry where we are. Right? So this is just black, flat black house paint that I'm playing with. And I'm just pulling it across with my favorite palette knife. And I'm going to go ahead and layer some things up too. Clean it off on one of the paints. <laughs> and then uh, one of my favorites that I almost never run out of is chalk or pastels of some sort or another. The black ones particularly. I love the black um, chalk. And this piece down here that I didn't talk about, but I've been working on it for a couple of years. And um, I had finally decided today that I was just wasn't making progress. So this is a collage I did. My son and I were doing a collage, and um, we just weren't making progress with that either. So, and then this is a pastel. This is a Rembrandt pastel, orange. One of my favorite colors lately is orange. Have you notice that? I did. <laughs> See already some of this because this is a lot of this is watercolor paper. So the stuff that I scraped on, I can already draw into. I'm just, I'm not again, not even looking. The point is to free your brain up a little. And then make some from the chaos. Start to make some order with the with the pieces. And we're gonna cut these up, rip them up. I know Kristen says you've done collage last two times, something like three. that, three times. But this is what I have to do sometimes with the leftover pieces. You know, I don't have any new surfaces right now. I um, I have a lot of material, clearly paint, but not a lot of places to put the paint. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and do some of that today. All right, but 10 viewers on Instagram and 10 viewers on TikTok. Oh, Come on. Is that good or bad? Oh, it's <laughs> funny. That one's going to line up. And this is the paint sticks. Love these things. Cheap, cheap, inexpensive paint sticks. Welcome, everybody, just joining us today. Getting out of a funk. Chaos. Trying to just, you know, work your way through this. When you get in a stuck position, you kind of do something crazy. And the easiest way for me is to grab a bunch of random stuff, throw it on the table, and just start doing things. You know, because I don't know where it's going to go. It could go anywhere. It could go like this. Oh, no. <laughs> and then it could go like this over here, something like this over the top of that. And I could try and make that on there. This one, could, this one could go on top of here. Look at that. We got wet paint on wet paint. What's a fixative? This person wants to do some macabre chalk drawings. Okay. And I suggest that we use fixative between, between layers. And between now their layer. question is, what's a fixative? Can we talk about that? So I work a lot in mixed media, so I have to have something, particularly if I want to build layers up and keep the, the former layer, like a chalk layer, or a pastel layer, or a pencil layer solid or keep its integrity. So uh, I use, I don't like to use a lot of sprays. My asthma kicks in really badly and I have trouble breathing. So I have to be very careful in the, in the winter time. And I stumbled over Degas Fixative, which, which is from a company called Spectra Fix. They're online, look them up. Um, spring for the more premium bottle because the spray will be better. And I just spray it right onto the, whatever you're doing. Thin layers build up thin layers like three, probably two to three at least, so that you can then build up surface upon surface upon surface. 
My wife is dancing with the music. Right Sorry. Now. It's adorable. <laughs> I had I had some uh, stuff to break up my headache, but it gives me a little bit of a... Gives you a little bit of a mood of... Jittery, she's moving. She's a moving part. So, I'm, now, I'm going to do, a, again, something a little different today. I'm going to build up some surface with that paint. I don't have surfaces, so I'm going to make some surfaces. And I'm going to work kind of like, like Jeff does. Oh, yeah. You want to go check out some really cool paintings and a process that, 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 that a guy who I've learned a lot from over the years. I met him on Instagram, really. But Jeff Wenzel. Jeff Wenzel yes. is a really phenomenal, phenomenal painter, artist. He's also a potter, really. He's also a potter. So he'll build layers up like this. And one of the things he does is he has a wall. He's got the wall, and he's doing um, a surface. He might start with a board or a bunch of paper, and then he's just building and building that surface up. And then he tears into it. He'll rip into it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking I might do today. Is start ripping into some of this stuff. If anybody would like to share the feed with somebody they think would like to watch it. So I'm actually somehow inadvertently doing a construction of a bigger piece with all these smaller ones. Probably. Now, what are you using right now? Is that just uh, to glue everything together? What are you using? This is this is a that's a very good question. I'm assuming that came from you. <laughs> <laughs> Way to lead the conversation. So that's a heavy matte, super heavy gel, and I like to use the matte because then you can actually work on it later. Some of the, some of the stuff. Let me grab it. Get that to it. Everybody can see it. All right. Yes. Ooh, there's some cool stuff this is happening what in the we are first layer. For the glue. Uh, yeah, actually, we, we design the sweatshirts and sell them. So if you're interested in purchase, please DM. We sell them um, one off at this point. Yeah, the, we were doing quite a bit of uh, product, but we've had some issues with some of the supply chain. So now I just, if you want one, please just reach out and then I will get it for you. So we're kind of, one of the things I debated when we were trying to come up with a name for this was making chaos out of, or making chaos out of order or order out of chaos. Yeah, except we have two with the same title. All right. Yeah. So, so we can't you doing that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So this is, but it really is getting out of a funk. I, I don't know where this is leading. So if you have questions about art process and what do you need to do or how do you do it. Um, today's a good day to kind of talk with me about some of the processes. I work every day, except when I'm in the field a lot. Uh, yeah, we do care a lot of all the art, believe it or not. As prolific as he is, it's a little difficult, but we do. It's really hard to keep up with it, actually. We, we really need to have it. But, you know, I'm not at a level where I can afford it. We can afford it yet, but we really need a um, uh, what's it called, artist archivist. assistant, we need an archivist, because archivist. there's literally thousands of pieces in here. Well, thank you, Silvio. I agree, it's beautiful work. <laughs> My wife is biased. Uh. Ooh, I'm gonna frame that in. So one of the things I'll have to be careful of, unless I unless I decide to make this part of this. So here, I'm going to back up a little bit. One of the things that we do, that I do, is that I use um, thin quarter inch luon. So this whole table is loose. It's a quarter inch plywood, four by eight. And I will work on this for a while. And color will get in it and stuff will end up on it. I find it really fascinating, you know, particularly the grid patterns that form because of the square formats we're working with, right? So this will end up being coming a four by eight foot painting. Uh, although I am considering starting to cut them up too. That might be a thing that's happening soon. 
Good, I'm glad you're loosening up over there for today. Let's Take do it out. Uh, color. What's your color? What color? I always ask this, but then I do my reacting for anybody. Oh, fluorescent red. <laughs> I don't normally use this color. You know? It's not I accidentally bought Actually, I thought this was fluorescent orange. Oh. <laughs> fluorescent, orange. Fluorescent, fluorescent red. So I'm going to use this today. Let's see where this leads me. And see what's this. It's his favorite color. Fluorescent red? Yeah, well, red. We got in the oh, red? His color, the Crayola markers this weekend. But you weren't home, but you said, he even has red, my favorite color. That's not actually blue now. <laughs> I like, I've always liked working with the paper crystal because of the texture that it forms. I just find it really interesting. Yeah, so maybe this will end up just being part of the table. <laughs> so when you have chaos like this, then you start looking at, okay, how do I, how do I start to make some order out of this. And, and you know, I've loosened up. So re reality is I could stop now. I could go and get a, a regular surface and start working on a regular piece. The point was I did something different. I stretched myself a little bit. And But let's keep working this for the heck of it. Shall we? Shall we keep working? Shall we keep working? We're only at 16 minutes, so you got time. <laughs> we got hours left of the day. Anybody want to stay for hours? I have a question for you. Yeah. How do you attach large paper paintings to the wall for display in a gallery? So I've seen people do it in a number of ways. That's a good question because we have an issue. If, 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 it, if you were tracking us before, this piece rolled up over here and on the floor. It's like 17 feet long and it's 52 inches tall. I don't know how I'm displaying it yet when it's done. It's not done. It's a long way from done. It's one of those epic pieces you work on. It's, it's like my collage is... What's it, uh, Garrison Keeler, the guy working on his, Garrison Keeler's working on Prey Own Companion. Oh. He's talking about his collages. Oh, he's always talking about the collages in the, yeah, <laughs> in the cafe. <laughs> so how do we do it, David? Well, that's a good question. Frequently we have them framed. <laughs> Frequently we have them framed. Yeah, so if you do have, if they are frameable, then frame. Um, use a framer. I don't like to do... Glass I don't like to do the glass. If you're going to use glass, spring for the museum, plexi glass would be the best. That's the most expensive. But if you don't have the museum plexi, then use um, museum glass. If you don't have that, then you know you don't have that. You just do something else. I've seen people put them on cables with clips. Yeah. So um, the show with Christopher Harrison. Yeah. I was just at the reception at the Duluth Art Institute. He, he was the one doing the talk, yeah. very good talk. He's from the Twin Cities, as we say around here. No, we're, we're in the... He's from the Twin Cities. Yeah, they call it the cities. The cities, they call it the cities. I, they also call it Twin Cities, but I guess it's... Yeah, I've seen magnets too, but... Anyway, he had little push pins. So there are little pieces on... Um, they're actually on that, that rather inexpensive pressing um, canvas board, canvas board. And he had four little pins there. But what, what would make me insane is you'd have to level it. You don't have to be perfectly level because you have four pins, right? So it's just that I couldn't do it that way. Yeah, I've actually been playing with the magnet idea for David's very large tapestry pieces. She has. Yep, then she has. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue behind that one. You're very welcome. Yeah, anybody else have any questions? Just ask away. Let's just take that away. Right Otherwise, there's no reason to be live. <laughs> well, don't open that door. Ugh. Man, the storm is just messing with my sinuses. Something weird. Yeah. I really like that fluorescent red. Breaking. The, so one of the things interesting is, is breaking the, the what you call it, the border too. It's another way to play. A lot of people are doing the big 
scrap with cars and yeah. just making a lot of progress. We have what's his name is doing a lot of those. I can't remember his name now. Sorry, buddy. He um we have one of his pieces. Oh yeah, we do paint out of doors. We do clean air. Uh, usually we do it in the summer because <laughs> we live where it's cold. Yeah. Um, and wet. That's coming up. We're going to be doing some of that outdoors. Yep, and I've got plans to take him into some parks and things. I've learned all the rules about how I can film in public. Yeah. Kind of excited, actually. Oh, uh, actually, it's an exciting time in Duluth because of the film credits and such. Yeah. There's a lot of There's stuff. There's a happening. burgeoning film industry in Duluth right now. There really is. I don't have a knife on me, so I'm going to just go ahead and rip. So I'm going to rip this piece here and see what happens. So revealing sections, building it up and yeah, up. I feel like a lot of abstract artists feel like they don't have the freedom to do plein air. Yeah. But they really should. Why can't you go and do that? I don't know. That's a, it's an interesting subject. Why people aren't. Well, they all think that it has to be, um, you know, realism when you do plein air. I think that's like the overarching feeling a lot of the times. Yeah, and I have, you know, when I've done, but even when I've done the realism ones for that plein air competition I did, um, that that one, I still abstracted it, you know. I mean, you could tell it was a, there was enough information. I guess you call it abstract representation. Oh, Paul, we were up and down Martin Road all week getting out to a water feature job. Let's see. They used to live on Martin Road. Oh, no kidding. Hey, hi there. Oh, welcome. Oh, Deborah does uh, abstract art plein air. And, uh, nice. Oh, welcome from Argentina. Rioja. Argentina, we always love seeing Argentina. you guys. Argentina. So this is a. Well, this is not the chalk. This is a chalk. Yeah. I wonder if it looks dark. My screen is turned off. Like, why does it look gray? Because <laughs> it's gray out I today. I just sit here for like fifteen minutes. Like, why is it gray? <laughs> Uruguay, welcome. Uruguay, I think that's a newer one for us. Well, there's not much in there. I can't do that one. Well, so I just, you know, it's the cacophony of stuff back here, right? To work with. I, sometimes, though, it gets to be a bit much, and I'll have to come back in and uh, organize. A lot of times that's a Monday for me if I have the time. Nancy's been working abstracts all week. Oh, G Paul, you're in East Texas. Cool. Yeah, that Martin Road has become quite a thoroughfare. I wouldn't call it a highway. But it's a kind of a back way to everything. Yeah. From our, from our point of view here. So I'm coming back in with some markings. And you may notice that we're starting we're starting to make some progress out of it. And already I I feel like I've gotten out of my funk. Because I'm enjoying this, you know, it's just fun, it's free. And I think that's the one that you get caught, like this like piece here, I was so stuck on the structure of that piece. I couldn't get past it. And that's when you gotta go nuts. If you ruin the piece, you ruin the piece because, hey, it didn't work in the first place, right? It wasn't working for you. That piece wasn't working for you. These pieces here that we just shredded and I'm gonna continue to shred, this wasn't working for me and these pieces weren't working for me either. You gotta get just good. What's the term back in the 90s or something? Radi radical. Yeah, get radical. You gotta get radical, dude. <laughs> Thank you, Brett Simpson. Oh, New Jersey, Chicago. So that's you know, that's what I decided to do recently, and, and the, the results have been very pleasing. I'm enjoying what's happening with the big piece, the four-foot piece. I don't know where it's going. But once you do it, set it aside somewhere where you can kind of look at it in the peripheral while you're you can sneak up on the piece and then you learn the lot. <laughs> I always like to sneak up on my work, right? Yeah, and yes, you can't always paint over, rip it up to put on other paints. <coughs> Holland. I turned around to grab something. I forgot what it was. Oh, this the white chalk. You know how hard it is to find white chalk? I do. Well, it's that Taylor's chalk, isn't it? No, that's the other stuff. The Taylor's chalk's really nice. So we got the kind of a semblance of. Um, language down here too. I like doing that. Okay. Black a few more places out. Oh, it's Grace Guys in Iowa today too. Grace Guys. Let's just go right there with that. And we'll take and 
I'm just going to use the big blade again. And so that's another way to do it is limit yourself. You know, set on your table a handful of stuff to work with. You know, just things that you haven't used before. I've mentioned this woman before that does the, the entire painting with a fork. She uses literally a fork. Oh, yeah, the fork lady. Fork lady. I don't remember her name. I'm sorry if you're around here. Well, have you seen the lipstick painting? No. Really amazing. How did I miss work. that? And all she uses is different lipsticks in the tube. She doesn't even use a paintbrush. She, she just. And you would never know until she told you. They're amazing. Ooh, see, now that's fun. I like that a lot. So apparently we're using red today, a lot of it. <laughs> oh, you're primarily an actor, but you paint to free up. I love that. Yeah. Well, a lot of guys do that, you know? A lot of, a lot of actors. A lot of actors do that. Got access to paint here, right? Question, what do you do if you run out of the colors you like? This person gets house paint. Yeah. Yeah, I've used house paint. Um, I can't say it's my favorite for a variety of reasons, but for years I had to use it. I had to use house paint for years. And then I, I managed to not. Through a lot of hard work, we, we have some good sponsoring. But <clears throat> that that is the best time. So you run out of paint. This is part of what I was trying to is, is a friend of ours online saying, well, I've run out of my stuff. And yeah, that is really hard. I mean, you can run out to the point where you just, there's hardly any, it freezes you, it freezes you. So you run out of your favorite paint. That's the time to get the paint that's ugly or that hate, whatever your leftovers. I have a lot of yellow ochre. <laughs> they always want to send me yellow ochre. I just don't use it. Well, because you're not a figure. I don't do it, but even, so, I mean, yellow ochre it goes a little, goes a long way. So I, I like to um, I like to actually shred the yellow ochre. Or I, I like to use the colors when I don't know where I'm going. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you're stuck, then do something different. Do something. Get crazy with it. Because all the paint's wet, I can I just move it around, rip it up. Remember this piece over here had a lot of layers in it, right? So let's just see what's down below. We're going to rip into that a little bit. Move a few things around. This kind of painting process takes a lot of time. And I think Jeff can attest to this. Mr. Wenz, Jeff Wenzel. Go give him some love on Instagram. Yeah, I'm just going to say it again, everybody. Everybody watching this is probably painting. Go check out their posts. Not right now. <laughs> Not right now. You know. When, when you have a chance. When your devices are uh, free. It's kind of a rude music in there. <laughs> I like that spot. I hate to do that. Let's go up through. Oh, I revealed pink. That's actually kind of fun. I now see kind of, it's it's like an act of discovery. The reason that Hugo sometimes mm -hmm. likes to kid you too is that surprise factor, right? I don't like what happened over here, so I'm going to cover it up. So we started with what? How many pieces? About six random pieces of paper, right? Yeah. And now we're just digging into it and adding and subtracting, rearranging as we go. Thank you for the follow call. Feel free to use your hands. Wow. Yeah, so we didn't have any services left, Nancy. So he took out five or six smaller, older pieces he didn't like anymore. 
and began painting over them and then ripping them and now throwing them into one larger piece. Mostly because we're out of synthesis and frankly, it's also out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, well, what I what I what triggered this this week was the piece I talked about earlier, the big pieces and the small ones that I've been stuck on, because I knew they were going in a different direction, right? But I just hadn't had a chance to explore what that direction meant, and now I'm I'm able to. This will help me get there. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm hoping it helps get me get there. Oh, I went all the way through. <laughs> I better put something on. Sorry, oh, yeah. guys. We just we don't do um, co-host lives. No. It is too chaotic for even we, our level. Of we're life. on we're on three different platforms, so for us, it's just really hard to. Now, if anybody wants to set something up officially and we can plan it ahead of time, yeah, we do go that. ahead and email us and give us your ideas, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, we we have done that kind of thing with people, so. Yeah, the canned muzak isn't so bad today, is it? No, <laughs> I kind of enjoyed it. It's a little bit funky. It's kind of fun. I wish we could afford to play actual muzak in the background. <laughs> right? So this is just a piece of graph paper I happen to have under there. And I'm going to put it, place it behind this piece. This section right here. Try to. It should be interesting. And some of this is already sticking to the to the table. So the next phase when this dries, we'll be scraping it off of the table and then seeing what will come, you know, what can actually be salvaged or what can be placed on a new surface. It's funny that the color came off like that. Uh, we do these every Saturday at uh, 1030 Central Time. And if you want to see, we have two years of archives over on IGTV. Well, what used to be IGTV, which is our Instagram account now, the videos. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've been doing these for well, a little over two years now. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting into it. I got quiet. Anybody else have any questions? Because I'd love to answer them if we can. I mean, okay. I can't give you the answer to life, the universe, and everything. 42. <laughs> I'm actually having a lot of fun with this. That's kind of why I got quiet because I'm enjoying the, oh. the reveal process. My wife is wandering off somewhere. Uh, the computer's outside. Oh! <laughs> Let's reveal a little more over here. I like the I like this idea of the building up the surface and just keep keep on. Um, Digging and expanding as you go. Like it's like an archaeology, an excavation. I really like this process actually. I think it's pretty fun. Right, you're gonna lose this light. <laughs> I'll go down too. Okay. That actually might not be tenable. There's no. a power fit. There's a power fit there. Oh, okay. Back in that shelf. Tool shelf. Now we're going really crazy. Won't come off. <laughs> That's some tough paper. There we go. So now I'm layering it up even more. Because you I ever garnish your work? Yes. Um, it's a qualified yes. And then I got a question from Paul. So right now, are you making a surface to paint on or do you paint as you go? 
I'm kind of doing a little of both. This is an unusual process for me, because, partially because, as we kind of stated earlier, uh, you know, I, some new stuff happened in the studio. And I'm kind of trying to come to terms with it because it's not typically what my, my direction would be. Paintings are becoming so stiff and so structured, which is not who I am. You know, between the ADHD and the, and the um, just my patience issues, I, I needed to have something. I like them loose, is what I'm trying to say. I like my You're losing a loose. back layer back. Give me this spatula. Is there something back there? Yeah. Back here. Want to get your fingers dirty. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So if I'd done this right, I probably should have um, done this on some wax paper. <laughs> So we shrank it down a little bit. I, I layered it up even thicker. And as this dries, I'll be able to dig down through this even more and try to add more and more structure to it and reduce the level of chaos as it is. Although it's very interesting right now, if I squint my eyes, mm -hmm. some artists best view it through squinted eyes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, are we both artists? Um, I am more of a computer artist. I don't paint anymore. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking what's happening. Yeah, so I do varnish. There's a number of different varnishes, but one of the things that I go back to, and I've mentioned this before, is because I work in mixed media, I have to be very cognizant of that fact, and I have to fix several several layers of the Degas fixative, lightly sprayed on, layered up. By the way, we're not sponsored. We just think it's a good no, product. No, they're really good. Um, but they, they uh, anyway, the point being is build, get that fixative on there first and then do your varnish on it. Okay? That's really important. And with mixed media, lighter layers of varnish are better. Yes. You go, just gentle, Otherwise, you layers. can really mess it up oh, a yeah. lot. It'll bleed. It'll be bad. It's a very interesting what's happened here. The fluorescent red, particularly as it dries, is going to be really dramatic. And um, I'm just wondering if I want to rip more or let it set up. I might let it set up and then come back in and, and do some more scraping, maybe even using uh, like some woodworking tools um, because the surfaces in the paint will get pretty strong, pretty tough. Uh, but I could then scrape down through layers using like sandpaper, really rough sandpaper, which could create some interesting textures. I think we might try that and see yeah. where it goes from there. I think that's a really good idea to try. And I don't think I have anything else down here I want to play with. Maybe we just keep it short. We're at what, what, half hour? Yeah, we're almost at 40 minutes, actually. That's so uh, I think I might call it there. And Stay tuned. Come back. Let's see what happens with this when it sets up. This is a good start, believe it or not, even though it looks like a cacophony of noise. <laughs> I think that this could be a really interesting piece uh, with a little extra strap. So I'll probably come in like with pencil, uh, acrylic markers are one of my favorite ways to take to the next level too. And, um, and maybe paint and then adding some more pieces or stripping this down a little bit, adding some stuff to it. A little bit. I kind of want to add, uh, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying where it is right now. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry. Okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> If I can get it off the board. We sort of loosened it off the board this thing. But any other questions before we go, everybody? Yep, last chance. Last chance. You can always email us though at david at davidaustingallery.com. That's right. And you can also purchase any paintings at davidaustingallery.com. Shameless plug from the back end of the case. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no 90s reference today on movies. I called yeah. you Austin Powers. Oh, we did do it. We did. Not a single episode goes by that we don't reference something, some movie reference, <laughs> television show that's mildly obscure and usually triggered. Anyway, I hope you all are doing well. Get out there, make some art, or stay in and make some art, whatever you need to do. <laughs> go out, oh, another way, go get some charcoal and do some charcoal art on the sidewalk. Yeah. That's fun, too. That's another thing we do. Um, I had a great time just doing this today. I'm going to try and go get some new surfaces. <laughs> this week 
Um, and be well, be kind to each other. It was great to see you again. Come back and visit us. We'll be doing hopefully a few more lives here and there with some discussions about pieces yep. like we used to do. That was actually We're really trying popular. to get back to our Wednesdays. We try to get some back to some structure. And I just saw that fluorescent piece again, the 24 inch. Oh, catches me out. I like that. I do too. That was with that group project. Anyway, take care, everybody. Be well. Um, and uh, that's it. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>